So as I should say, Zdravaiti, Kakste. Okay, so I'm trying to learn and I have amazing colleagues trying to teach me, but it's very similar to Serbian, so it's not that hard to learn. And this is fi finally, if, it, if you learn Cyrillic, it's not just one, one part of Europe, as each country has to have its own language, which is very hard. We don't have this in Arabic, so it was a nice experience. And uh, thank you for the organizers to have me for the first time in person conference since pandemic. I was doing all the online, which is very hard. I love people, I love to see. Ah, there is people joining, that is nice. So, thank you for your attendance. I'm so sorry for this kind of misalignment uh, with the session. As he had been said, I expected that the, um, tomorrow is the conference, actually, and he called me like, where are you? I'm just in the work. I'm pushing something and, you know, reviewing, call like, man, your session in five minutes. What? Then I came running, so thank you again for the organizer to swap my session. And thanks for the previous speaker for his uh, patience to deliver his session. So without further ado, let's go into the topic because I have a lot to say. Usually, uh, this is about Java. We are so fast. This is one of the complaints that I get from people. Like before, like four years ago, man, Java is going to be killed. There is no Java anymore. We're going to switch to different languages. And now people say, like, you're so fast. We cannot cope. Yes, so this is how we have to cope with the language. So, you know, uh, from Java 18, we have, this is almost feature release, not LTS. LTS was previous one. I have a speech about this, and I have articles also that I will share with you. I write for Java Magazine. Uh, IBM work, developer work, InfoQ, so, but mainly for Java Magazine. So this is the Hidden Gems series. You will find it, so if you forget anything, which is normally, uh, you will find the article that you will find everything that I will show to you. So what is Hidden Gems? Every talk is about Java is always showing that Java enhancement proposal, which shorted to GIPs. So this is the main features that always you just focus on it, and you get, there is a lot of other release notes you don't know about or you are not aware of, which is like introducing deprecations, introducing, you know, farewell to some API, new additions, GVM tweaks, you know, tools, uh, a lot of like more other features that you didn't get in touch with unless you go deeply. So I, I discovered that, yes, this is something I want to use. And whenever you know what's inside your language, you will avoid using third-party third libraries. For example, when I want to have, like, combine two features, that one of them, like, single source code, which is you can run Java file with Java immediately, you don't have to compile it, and I want to make, like, uh, black box testing. So I have REST endpoint I want to call. This feature doesn't allow you to have different, for example, libraries or class paths because it's compilation in memory. But I have in Java already a new API or module for uh, Java.net, so I can call WebSockets, I can call REST endpoints, whatever it is. It already exists. We have developed it and goes to production since Java 11. So you know, when you know more, you know how to use your tools. I, so it solved for me a big problem, not relying on third party library in order to achieve my, you know, black box testing from Bash, because I can finally also convert my Java class into Bash command and just call it like a bin director. So th this is another talk like showing the most effective things, but this is how I tell you about the features. So let's deep dive. I don't have to repeat. Uh, if you forget about the name is already written, and uh, I'm working for a company called Efortel. It's a telecommunication company, Java Champion, and Oracle Ace, and some other stuff in the community. So you, this is usually my publications for a long time ago, but I prefer to write more articles because books take so much time on video. And by the way, I will share with the community the presentation so you can find all of these kind of our links. Each link will take you directly, either to the JIB or release notes or uh, the article that has all this information. So, if you want to catch me, I'm here. I'm going to move, hopefully, and uh, I will bring this back so you can take a snapshot. But I'm living on Twitter, so. 
or search my name and you'll find everything. It's much easier. That's enough. Our agenda, what we're going to talk, speak about, introduction, we already have it. And uh, let's uh, check out some important features about the Java, explore some new language APIs, and also explore some new improved Java language, specifically from API side and tooling. And also we will check out what we are removing, because this is very important. We are not background compatible anymore, but we give you opportunity to move forward, to re re relax your older implementation, because we're going to remove, not just deprecating. For a long time, until Java 11, we were still deprecating and marking for removal. Since Java 14, we completely start to remove features. Then you compile, there is no API, there is no tools, there is no options for the GVM, for garbage collector. Then you have to know, because the migration purpose. Lastly, if there is any open source tools that we are provided for you, like uh, Visual VM, for example, uh, JRealizer, Java benchmarking that we use to benchmark our API, not performance, from our performance for your APIs. Not because people confuse G GMH, Java micro benchmarking. We using, for example, when we develop like libraries for security, and we have different hash algorithms. What are we going to do? I want to test which one is faster in different cases. This is things that we use it for. So let's check out the main new features that has been introduced. And those are not hidden because everyone, but there is, they are really interesting for us, and we have to know about it. So I will switch to the article. So we can see with the, some other. So those are the main GIFs. Do you, can you see it or make it more bigger? Is it OK? Or this is much better? OK. So those are the main GIFs that already you can see on the GDK website, you know, on the Open GDK when you just hit the landing page. What are those? Those are the languages mainly changing and things that you have to, uh, to know about. But there is a lot of hidden things that we will speak about. So one of the most interesting one is JIP 400. This is something called UTF by default. So if I go to some examples like this, if you can see it or make it a little bit bigger. Is it OK? OK, silence means agreement, so, like marriage. Uh, somehow, <laughs> it's not usual case, but let's see. For something like this, we struggle, especially when you are writing files and reading files on different operating systems, especially Windows. Because Windows, by default, using different uh, character set encoding. While Mac and Linux and Unix using UTF by default. So if you wrote a file, in Linux and Mac, distributed to someone else using Windows, he will see rubbish. So if I wanted to write this using FireWriter, for example, new file, and I write Arabic. So if you read it back on Linux and Unix, super, because it's written in UTF. And when you read it, the default fallback is UTF, because I didn't specify any character set. So if I run this. I want to read this file. Now my friend prefer Windows, and he's working on it. I give him the file. It's super amazing. And when he run it, he will get this rubbish that you can see as an output. This is a problematic. So I have to have, he has to care to say, I'm reading this as a UTF-8. But for experienced developer, they will know it. For normal developer, they will have to stuck for you know, some time in order to know what is this. Imagine this is about reading sockets, whatever it is, it's distributions. You have to specify this kind of stuff. So even if sometimes if you specify uh, this is uh, something new, we have even problem with older APIs and newer APIs. So the newer API is taking UTF by default into account, but the older API does not. So if I write a file and read it again on the same, it will give me another rubbish. So this is another problem. And this is what you're going to expect on the same machine. Why? Because files 
and the newer API expect that. I'm reading in UTF-8. But the file writer writing on the default. So you're writing in Windows, encoding, and reading UTF-8. Definitely, you will get rubbish. This is another problem, mixing. So, you know, one solution, you know, I have to specify the character set. Or using this kind of property in order to specify, but this is also will be a problem because the file already written in UTF-8. So if you wrongly specify the character set, it will also. So the solution for this is to simply make all the APIs respect UTF by default, even older API. If they doesn't have it, we have engaged that on all operating system, they will be consistent uh, OIO operations. This is why UTF-8 by default is very important, and definitely we brought a lot of enhancement we used in different libraries. Okay, now I'm front-end engineer or some static things I would like to work on. And you know, every programming language provides you a simple static server that you can run and list all your static content, right? So why Java doesn't provide this? So we have very nice feature for JIP 408. It's called Simple Web Server. You can simply invoke it as a tool like this from the command line, it will run, list the current directory. You can just access your static files as a testing purpose uh, as you want. This is not a full-fledged and not meant to be full-fledged application server. It's mainly used for testing purposes, for static files, for things like this, if you would like listing or whatever you want. But it's also powerful because we have we can provide configuration, so we can customize it. But if what if I want to do my own implementation? Yes, we can do this because we have an API. You can, from your code, start the server, implement handlers for git, post, put, whatever it is, implement your own protocol that customize and suits your cases as well. So this is a very nice tool. It's out there for free, so you don't have to have another third party or something like this. Let's move to code snippet. Finally, we could have code snippet inside Java documentation. Do you know what is code snippets? Before, you know, we using, you know, pre, if I want to have some code written in Java documentation, I have to either use pre or, you know, add code. What is the difference between pre and add code? So this is will be rendered like this, and the other one with add code because you know, if you want to review the uh, encoding uh, characters for HTML as it is used at code, if you are using pre, it doesn't respect that you have to encode it. But those are the only ones, and you cannot specify much on your code snippet. Now, with Java 18, it's very simply that you can write it like this. You use this tag, and you write whatever you like, and also this is how it could render exactly the same like before. What if I would like to highlight you know, something? I would like to show you something, link something. I don't have to do a lot of efforts. All what I can do here, for example, I want to highlight all the read lines in this code to just emphasize. So you will get it like this. You have copy-paste by default inside documentation. There is much more. And if I would like to highlight using pattern, yes, if I do like this and start and end using snippet, you will get snippet code like this. It will be highlighted for you and also to get attention which part you would like without doing like ASCII doc or something like this to get these kind of features. And definitely you can also link. So yeah, you can go to this link in order to see the full documentation of this API. So here it is, it will appear like this, click on it, it will navigate you to the, uh, immediately to the uh, Java documentation without any uh, things that you have to do furthermore. And also, final thing I didn't mention here, that you can include snippet from different file. So you have source code, you, you just mark it from starting and ending, and you mention the file, it would be taken automatically into your Java documentation. You don't have to repeat it even. So it's dynamically. Whenever you change, it will be reflected. So this is all about code snippets, because this is one of the features a lot of people have been asking for since long time. Definitely, definitely, 
we have a problem. If you are working with frameworks, working with reflections specifically, we have three ways to do reflections. And it was very costly for Oracle engineers to do the maintenance, different way, why we have to use it. Simply, we just simplify it and unify it in one only method, which will reduce the cost and give you opportunity for only one API to use. And definitely, we can improve it more and more. Because instead of distributing the same bug fix or implementation, three parts, it's only one part. And we use invoke dynamic definitely uh, that introduced in Java 8, Lambda expressions. So you can read about the cases here. And this is Internet Address Resolution Service Provider. OK. Uh, this is, we have a limitation in current GDK before GDK 18. The limitation goes when you would like to testing, you're doing testing, or you would like to test on local host or something, and you call a specific server, it has to go to the DNS, resolve, and come back to you. And, and doesn't also respect HTTPS, security layer, TLS, uh, the new you know, protocols of the network. It's very limited and old-fashioned and depends on operating system implementation, how to resolve IBs, internet addresses. And they don't want this. I want to customize the reading of my addresses. Even I want to just, when I call this DNS, it reply back with my local address. So I'm matching names. You know, it doesn't have to go through the DNS. And I configure this uh, address through the DNS. I, I don't want all these kind of operating system problems. So if you run something like this, I want to Google. Yeah, it will go to DNS, go outside, return back with some information like this. Here is Google IBs that you want, and that's it. What if I want, when I call Google for mocking, it just loop back to my local address and say, yeah, I'm, I'm here, and here is the address. Then I can access my, my addresses like this. You cannot do it in the previous way. But currently, we can do it by implementing a new set of APIs that allow me to customize and hook it. And when the application starts, it will read all these resolvers. So we have SPIs, a new SPIs to override all this. So we are not depending on the operating system. And this is very important. So this is how it's implemented. First, you have Internet Address Resolver. And just you set your IB that you want or the set of server, servers locally, even on specific DNS names. And finally, I have to implement also my, uh, my provider to return my resolver. And then I will write this file. And when I run the previous code, automatically Google will return for me 127.0.0.4 instead of the actual address. So this is like internal. This is very important for testing, people who's testing. Also, it respects all the new protocols that has been added to the networking. So we have HTTPS, we have TLS, one and two, all of this kind of stuff. So those are, I didn't speak about the bunch of jobs that I showed to you at the beginning, because some of them, like, yes, not relevant for each developer, but most of them, that, that the one that I showed to you is really, really important, you know, because it's every day they can solve your cases. Let's go to the other part, because those were, were not so hidden. You know about it? And this is specifically the hidden gems, as I told you. So oh, not all the enhancement in Java, as I told you, introduced as a gems. And uh, as a feature release or LTS release. So let me stop here to ask, do you know what is the difference between feature release and release node, LTS? I know that you know, but because you had lunch and drinks, so I will be the answer here. The, the main feature that every two years now, every single, every two years, we have LTS. This is, had been changed since last year because it was three years. And every two years, you have LTS. LTS is very good for companies that won't rely on long-term support version, so you get support from different providers. Uh, from Oracle, Azul, AWS, uh, Microsoft has their own, by the way, GDK. Uh, 
Alibaba, SAP, SAP, whatever it is, each one of those relying on OpenGDK and then give the support. The feature release is only supported for six months. After that, dropped, then the support goes to the next release. So the feature release just, you know, give you opportunity to migrate. So I want to, I have my lab, I want to migrate from 11 to uh, 17. Then I can, each application, I can see what the new feature changes. So when I hit the new LTS, I don't have a lot of like bugs, problems, removals, you know, takes so much time. So feature release, it's opportunity for you to test your code on the new release. You might just migrate, everything works because you take it into consideration. So this is the big difference between both of them. But there is no support after the first six months. We have two releases in March and September. This is always the schedule. And between LTS and LTS, we leave for you like three years. So they are overlapping. So you can take opportunity to migrate and still supporting you. I don't drop until three years after the next LTS. Then there is no support because I left for you like three years. What you need more. And I, you have feature releases, like a bunch of feature releases. So this is the code that shows that I'm using uh, G snippet. Uh, G shell, sorry, version 18. So, how many of you know about G shell? Wow, it's not it's quite few, to be honest. G uh, oh, there is some people. Sorry, guys. So it's a little bit more than few. <laughs> so the main purpose of G shell is something like interpreted, uh, you know, interactive. Um, Console, same like JavaScript. When you open console, write commands. Would like to uh, evaluate immediately without open an ID, public static. You have class, public static void main, print a statement, you know, or some feature. No, and G shell, it's an interactive console, and then you just write commands without even semicolon or anything, and you get the result immediately. So this is, I use it many times to test all the kind of features that I want to test in the language without ID or whatever it is. It's available through the bin folder. So it's same like Java C and Java uh, interpreter. So uh, do you hear about pattern matching? We have it since Java 13. We enhance it switch. So switch could be statement and expression as well. So I can use it as a return statement. Then we introduce sealed classes, and then we say, OK, we have to enhance the switch to deal with hierarchies. So either with sealed or enums. Enums, but it was before. But we start to introduce it. It could be also used for casting. When we say, like, I want I, I was going, I was just developing yesterday something. I want to generalize it. But in each sub case, I want to handle something. So I don't have to have if statement. If number is instance of integer, do this or log it in this way. No, I can use switch statement. Switch case and case integer. I can immediately write the casted value. It has a, it's written already in the previous one, so I can show it to you, uh, article of Java 17. Send the casting even where it used it. So previously you can say object, an instance of object is okay. You cast to get the object. In new Java, no, you can even in F an instance Object, instance of object, then identifier immediately. What does it mean here? Yeah, if the checking of instance of succeed, I will cast it under the hood for you and I will assign it to this variable and use it immediately. You don't have to do this casting stuff. So let's see here. I want to, oh yeah, I wrote about it here also. So, But this is specific cases that we have two bugs actually in GDK 17, and we wanted to continue solving. This is why it's a preview three. So do you know what is the preview feature? I'm looking here also. So there is one here, nice, at least one. And there is second one. We have preview feature, we have incubator module. So I will leave it to the end, and I will speak about this feature so you understand what is this, because we have switches to allow and disallow this feature. So, for example, here, this is still, as you can see, second preview. So for second preview, then it's not final in the language. 
So it's disabled by default. How could I enable it? Yeah, we have dash dash preview enable as a key. You give it to the GVM, which is Java or Java C when you compile. So it's a different version. So we have Java could be compiled to two versions, bytecode. So this is, if it's not disabled because I can, it's still, we, could, we might change it, we might drop it, we might change something. This has happened in Switch, to be honest, previously. Then I cannot leave it by default, so you are crying because I changed something and break in production. So this is why we have preview feature. I let you to try to get into, give me the feedback, I enhance, then when it's no more feedback, no more bugs, it hit the finalization, so like final version. So this is switch. So here, for example, I want to test if the object passed of type integer, and then if it is, assign it to number, and number now I want to just uh, print it. And if it's integer, and this is called guarded pattern, and the number is greater than 20, do something. Yeah, we can do this in switch. So what is the problem here? This is dominance test. The problem is that the first case, OK, here is overriding the, f the, the second one because it's the general one. And this is, OK, you have to reorder your cases in this way. So the, compile, the code will compile, but it will never fail to the second case because the number is always taking the case. So this is not correct. So in Java 17, in order to correct it, you have to introduce uh, uh, ordering. And for example, if you'd like to have a static case 7, if number is 7, so what is the problem? It will never reach because number greater than 6, it will fail through here, so it will never go to case 7. And this is another problem. So even though object equal to 7, as, as you have seen, it doesn't matter, which should match pattern in line 5. It should be, obviously, but it will not. Because always will be matched in pattern number 4. As you can see, it's the greater, wider. And then you will have a problem says case 7 is not reachable. And this is, since this is continue to be unreachable, and this is work in Java 17, it will, not it will not complain, but we enhance it in Java 17 to give you a warning to say, be careful, this branch, it will never be uh, reached. So just remove it. Another one is when we work with sealed classes. Do you know what is sealed classes? Oh. Uh, okay, I'm expecting because it's a new feature. Thank you for people reading about it. Sealed classes is about uh, authoring the API, the hierarchy, to limit what before we use identifiers, public, protected, you know. And since Java 9, public is not public anymore. Public is not public outside the module because we have modules. Package was the, the biggest container for all your source code since until Java 8. With Java 9, which is optional also, you have module. And module can contain different packages. But we use them when we provide a public class, it will be public everywhere. But, you know, I want to use it from different uh, packages, but I don't want the external user to use it. This is a problem that we have in GVM in one of the classes called unsafe. Unsafe operation. And we were like dealing with this, how to hide it. How to hide it. And we were relaxing this for remove it. But because of public. Then the module comes to, to provide us for real encapsulation. Real encapsulation means when I say public for a package, even if you try to access it, uh, sorry, for class from the package, from outside, I say, you don't have access. It's a private inside the module. If you want, you say, OK, I want to export this class to outside world. So you have more control. So since then, yes, we use then this is something nice. But what about? limitation of the hierarchy. I have box or shape, and I have circle, I have uh, rectangle, I have square, and they have different, they have default implementation. You know, there is no one will change this kind of implementation for square or whatever it is. And I would, I would like to allow you just to, you know, implement whatever shape you are, you, you want. But those are basic, you cannot touch it, you cannot inherit it, but they are public can be used. 
Then sealed classes came. Sealed means stamped, cannot touch it. So yeah, I can do final, you know, you have to do a lot of coding. And then the access modifiers. And also it's limiting who can access what, even if they are public. So in, in order also to test these cases, we enhance the switch to do this for sealed classes. So if you have, especially with generic, always we have problems with generic. So Im imagine that we have a sealed interface, sealed interface or sealed abstract classes. You can have it like this. So sealed interface, uh, like I of T, and that permits A and B. What is A and B? This is the only two classes is allowed to implement this interface. If you try to have another interface to implement I, it will say you cannot. It doesn't allow you to do this because it's not listed in permit uh, statement. Then I have a final class, uh, A of X, and implements I of string. And then final, another class, B of Y, implements I of Y, something, whatever you provided. And let's consider this. I of long, then switch A of long equal, uh, uh, if it matches, assign it to A, then I use A to print it or whatever it is, and B. And instead, when you compile this, you will find this, you know, this error, which is incompatible types, okay? Yes, this is both version recognize that I of long definitely is not compatible because I already, which is A, in case A, it's implement I of string. And this way, I don't have this. So the only implementation that I can cover here is B, class B, which is correct. So when you remove it, Therefore, the possible solution is to the sealed classes hierarchy is to introduce the only uh, uh, case that implement I of long, which is B of long. But if you compile this previously in Java, it will say you didn't cover all the cases for that interface. But it's not, it's not applicable because a different implementation. So this was a bug. So I don't have to, to provide it. So we solved this in Java. 18, and it will compile without any warning to give you, you have to cover A and B, because this is the hierarchy. All provide default. Same like enums. If you didn't put all the enums uh, variables, in the cases, they will say like, there is, might be some enums value that does not cover, so provide default. Victor API, so those is like enhancement. Uh, Victor API, if the people interested in writing like Victor, you know, uh, computation for mathematical computation. We, this is third incubator means it was there since Java 15, 16, uh, uh, yeah, 16, 17, and this is the third one because we are providing enhancements. So it's now works on ARM scalable vector extension. So we have it not only on normal, you know, uh, Intel processor or Mac or whatever, an ARM process so the Victor implementation could work on limited devices as well, if you'd like. And as an optional uh, architecture uh, extension for ARM. So this is one of the enhancements. But Victor mainly has been introduced to do this Victor computation inside Java. So you don't have to rely on third-party computation and it manages things. So foreign function and memory API. This is something also second incubator. Do you know why we introduced this, this? Okay, how many of you know GNI, Java Native Interface, that allow me from all Java 1 to call C++ codes that we use, or third-party code, and also this error-prone, very hard to write, and it has to be, you know, not easy to recover because you are accessing outside security issues, and then we decided to say, OK, we should implement Java Pure API to manage this. This is for foreign function, because they are two, API, uh, two different uh, JIPs. And yes, I can now, not just C++, any kind of programming language, I can access it with a pure, secure, easy to use, scalable uh, API. What is foreign memory? This is really interesting part we got from the people who is using big data tools, because big data needs a lot of memories to process data, to map files into memory, such like Ignite, MapDB, you know, SysBuffer, all of this kind of stuff. So 
why your application, if it reads some files or getting data, has to have configured with a lot of bunch of memory that just only for mapping files, but your application, for example, require one giga of memory to operate normally, but you specify like 16 terabyte. Why? Because they have a lot of memory. No problem, man, with this API and young ladies. Uh, <laughs> Uh, with this API that we have to, can, we can access foreign memory outside the GVM. So I have the heap and GVM. Hey, I want to read this file. Okay, I will consult operating system. Do you have a memory? Read this file here, and I will get this chunk of data processing it and return it back to you. Another, and it support enter process, threading, everything. So this is was very, very important. Then the guys who implemented this and maintain it outside of the GVM for big data tools to work. Now they have it by default in GVM and integrate it internally. ZJC, uh, GC, uh, serial GC and parallel GC, this is kind of garbage collector. We know that the default garbage collector is G1 GC uh, for, since Java 9. And this is what, by default, you get it. So what is, and then we start to introduce a bunch of GG, garbage collector. Why? For different cases. Even we have a garbage collection that does nothing. Yeah, what does it mean? Yes, it does nothing. It doesn't reclaim anything. It's called Ellipson. You can use it, but do you know why we could have something like this? I have another session I was thinking about it, but let me give you a hint. Sometimes I I'm developing an application on limited devices or memory, and I want to see how my application running inside this. But the GVM require garbage collector. So this garbage collector out there to fill this gap, but it does nothing. It doesn't do any garbage collector for memory. So if you are above the memory, it will be out of memory. Then you know, uh, I have used wrong data types, I, I use some. This is why we have non-functional garbage collector out there. It's called Ellipson. So those, we have enhanced them because, uh, for example, if you want to like, use memories like above teras, you have to use ZGC garbage collector. Each one has their own cases. This is why we have more foreign memory. We have also garbage collector for this kind of big memory. But we introduced a function called duplicate string. String duplication reduction. What does it mean? We have it since Java 9. So it means, <clears throat> you know, sometimes we have the same string content with different names. So we could have four variables. They have the content, but they are in different memory segment. But they are the same. The byte code inside, which is the array of characters, are equal. Then what we do here, OK, you have the same data. I will point all of these references to the same data, and I will remove the others. So I optimize the memory. And it's a switch. You can enable it uh, when you would like to, to use it using this use string duplication. It's very nice. If you are using string heavily and you would like to optimize your memory, use it. And now it's available with all of these a garbage collector as well as G1 GC, which is the default one for your Java implementation. Definitely, you know that we have removed security manager in favor of removal. We just try to remove and replace the old implementation with the new implementation and find replacement. We have to tell you, if you are using something like git subject or do as, don't use it anymore, and because we have some other replacement for this. Because security manager, we intended to remove it since Java 15. We, we say this is something new. When I deprecate, I say when the intention for removal. So usually we leave it for you like two releases. So two releases, then this feature is gone. So you have to say bye-bye for that. So I have to provide for you alternative solutions, and this is why we have to give it. This is for migration. Uh, character set for name, this is, has default. You remember UTF by default? So the old APIs, if they doesn't have character set, they have to have it by default. So the, we enhance it the for name to have this call by default if you don't provide it. It will not throw an exception 
unsupported uh, character set, no, it will take you to FBIT by default. So this is more enhancement it takes. G1 heap region, this is allow you, you know, when you read data and you put it in memory. For the garbage collection, it's nice to have it in chunks, you know, but wherever the chunk is bigger, it's allow you to save bigger object inside. So you don't have to, for fragmentation wise, for the garbage collector and collecting, it's much easier and faster. And also you don't have to fragment your object into different memory sizes. Then, you know, the tracking of this object is very difficult for the garbage collector. So we decided to have it more bigger, 500, uh, which is configurable, uh, 512 megabyte up to this. The default is 32. So, yeah, we had something also could introduce memory leak and sometimes memory issues if you have a lot of internal classes and you're using proxies and this kind of stuff. So if you have class inside class, when you compile it normally up to Java uh, 17, you will have this implementation as a byte code, like it should be like this. So the main problem here is this one. Even if the internal class doesn't use the external one, you have to have a reference for that class. But imagine if the graph is very big, what are you going to do? You have a reference, take occupy the memory. So the big problem here, like why we have to have it? If there is no reference from the internal class to the external one, remove it. So why we have to have it? So this enhancement has been done, and since GDK, you can find it like this. If there is no reference to the external, it will be compiled, and there is no need for this synchronized and, uh, reference to the external one. <coughs> Again, do you remember when I was like, in my example, using print writer and print stream, the older API, they should follow. So if I don't specify again the default character encoding, they will use character for name to get the default, and it will be UTF-8. So write file on any operating system and read it from any different operating system without any more problems. Security. We start to kill it. Because why? We don't need it anymore. Same like ablets. There is no more ablets anymore. It has been marked for removal. We left it for four releases out there and now has been killed in the next uh, features. So security, the manager system property that changing the security by default is obsolete. If you just set it, it will do, it will do in, it will not do anything. So lo some fixes in JED, uh, JED, <laughs> ZGC. Um, this is a small bug for referencing, like when we have concurrency and referencing memory, it's sometimes stuck. It doesn't do anything. You have to stop your application. So it was, Little, if you face something like this, if you're using it, we have solved it since Java 18. SH1 signed have been disabled because first, it's very old nowadays hash coding implementation. And then any jar file signed after, I don't remember, like, yes, uh, 1st of January 19, uh, 2090, 2090, I will not accept it. I will feel like it goes exception. I don't accept this. So sometimes, yeah, I need to read it because I didn't migrate yet. What is the reason? You have to sign the jar file with different hashing algorithm because we are removing and then we need to prevent these old security leaks. So, but there is a solution. You can read about it if you want to like, still using it, but it's on your own security. Yeah, you know Java documentation, we have a tab for exceptions and tabs for errors. Now don't freak out if you didn't find it. Where is the errors? They are merged into one tab. It's called exception. And also we have improved the Java documentation. So you still you are going in the bus. You can read the Java documentation because you are we are nerds, guys. But I didn't do this, to be honest. Uh, you can read it on your mobile device. It will be rendered correctly without any issue. No problem for that. So finalizations. Do you know what this finalization is? We are almost reaching the end. This guy, you need to be hired somewhere. He knows a lot about Java. <laughs> so finalization, this is like finalizers. Then I need to clean resources when my object has been going to be destroyed. But this is, in, it's not guaranteed when it will run. It's same like gc.run. 
okay, thank you for the order. Okay, run. It's not your problem. I will run when, I, when it's allowed to me to run and claim the memory. So it, this is introduced a lot of problems. Security, implementations, and then there is no more finalizers, which is in form of finalize method. So there is no finalize. It's going to be removed. And because it's unpredictable latency, something you are trying to access from there and closing, you have problem with uh, unpredictable behaviors. So a lot of stuff you can read about. So what we can use, implement auto-closable. You have a closed method. Try resource. Try the resource that we have since Java 7. So it will be automatically by the GVM cleaned and, you know, returned for you when you just finish your piece of code. Another API we have introduced since Java 9, which is called Cleaner API. You can use it to do this kind of purposes. So, another, what is a GIF flight recorder? It's just a way of monitoring your GVM actions on production or fly, uh, on, the, uh, on the fly while your application running, and you can submit this either GMS or on log files immediately. But also we have enhanced this to provide all the information and statistics which class is still using finalizers and emit some events based on that. So you can know, oh, I'm using finalization here and here and here, let me kill them and use a replacement for those uh, um, enhancements. Uh, for those finalizers. Finally, we don't have thread to stop. It was going to be terminally deprecated for removal because, you know, they were deprecated since Java 1.2. Can you imagine? We are 18, and since Java 1.2, it's deprecated. Why, why are you leaving? Background compatibility. And this is why it's all, yeah, we have to deprecate because useless. Same like you have commented out code in your code and you leave it. For maybe we could return to it. When you need it, just write it. It maybe there is another new solution to you can provide it. Don't leave commented out code inside your code. It's an ugly. Yeah, because I was doing code review and then I found it, so it stuck to my mind. So as well as resume and suspend also is going to be deprecated. Again, security subject do as because I told you, deprecate for removal, I provide some alternative to use it. So you have either JavaX security subject, have all the methods. We have a new, uh, these two options has been selected, so you don't have to use it. The legacy, all this, the second one, datagram, and yeah, those, in f we re implemented WebSockets. Datagram, why? In favor of virtual threading that we are going to introduce, Project Loom. Virtual threading is a very nice way to write threading in the new era without creating actual thread to interact with the operating system. You can run one million thread like that without memory. Problems or worrying about that. And all of them inside one thread or two threads based on your core. So it's very optimized that way. It's user mode threads. So all the I.O. have to respect that. Empty finalizer methods inside desktop, if you are using uh, Swing or something, has been removed, definitely. All the implementation for internet address, this is like something uh, just was there to hook with the operating system, has been removed because we introduced that JEP for SBI. You can write your own implementation. Conclusion, this is the end. So I know that most of you find not interesting, but or it's a bunch of information. I know this is why I wrote it an article, so you can visit it and you can have. If you have any questions, I believe that you want to run to the rifle, but believe me, knowledge sometimes is good. Questions? So if there is no questions, this is the end of the day. I wish you a really pleasant evening, and I wish that you, every one of you have something from the rifle. Thank you for listening. Thank you for attendance. It was my pleasure.